This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Paragraph to attacking the female sex. I had to accept their unfavorable opinion of women, since it was unlikely that so many learned men, who seemed to be endowed with such great intelligence and insight into all things, could possibly have lied on so many different occasions. It was on the basis of this one simple argument that I was forced to conclude that, although my understanding was too crude and ill-informed to recognize the great flaws in myself and other women, these men had to be in the right. Thus I preferred to give more weight to what others said than to trust my own judgment and experience. I dwelt on these thoughts at such length that it was as if I had sunk into a deep trance. My mind became flooded with an endless stream of names as I recalled all the authors who had written on this subject. I came to the conclusion that God had surely created a vile thing when he created woman. Indeed, I was astounded that such a fine craftsman could have wished to make such an appalling object, which, as these writers would have it, is like a vessel in which all the sin and evil of the world has been collected and preserved. This thought inspired such a great sense of disgust and sadness in me that I began to despise myself and the whole of my sex as an aberration in nature. With a deep sigh, I called out to God, O oh Lord, how can this be? Unless I commit an error of faith, I cannot doubt that you, in your infinite wisdom and perfect goodness, could make anything that wasn't good. Didn't you yourself create woman especially, and then endow her with all the qualities that you wished her to have? How could you possibly have made a mistake in anything? Yet here stand women, not simply accused, but already judged, sentenced, and condemned. I just cannot understand this contradiction. If it is true, dear Lord God, that women are guilty of such horrors, as so many men seem to say, and as you yourself have said, that the testimony of two or more witnesses is conclusive, how can I doubt their word? O oh God, why wasn't I born a male, so that my every desire would be to serve you, to do right in all things, and to be as perfect a creature as man claims to be. Since you chose not to show such grace to me, please pardon and forgive me, dear Lord, if I fail to serve you as well as I should, for the servant who receives fewer rewards from his Lord is less obligated to him in his service. Sick at heart, in my lament to God I uttered these and many other foolish words, since I thought myself very unfortunate that he had given me a female form. 2. Christine tells how three ladies appeared to her, and how the first of them spoke to her and comforted her in her distress. Sunk in these unhappy thoughts, my head bowed as if in shame, and my eyes full of tears, I sat slumped against the arm of my chair, with my cheek resting on my hand. All of a sudden, I saw a beam of light, like the rays of the sun, shine down into my lap. Since it was too dark at that time of day for the sun to come into my study, I woke with a start, as if from a deep sleep. I looked up to see where the light had come from, and all at once saw before me three ladies, crowned and of majestic appearance, whose faces shone with a brightness that lit up me and everything else in the place. As you can imagine, I was full of amazement that they had managed to enter a room whose doors and windows were all closed. Terrified at the thought that it might be some kind of apparition come to tempt me, I quickly made the sign of the cross on my forehead. With a smile on her face, the lady who stood at the front of the three addressed me first. My dear daughter, don't be afraid, for we have not come to do you any harm, but rather out of pity on your distress we are here to comfort you. 
Our aim is to help you get rid of those misconceptions which have clouded your mind and made you reject what you know and believe in fact to be the truth.